Okay. All right, that's done. So can you see the screen that I'm sharing? Yes, I can. Oh, it says it's not share screen. Now it is. Yeah, I can see it. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, so I'm up to here. You can see we talked about this yesterday, remember? Man is capable of meta. One cannot infer yep. that maybe X is the killer. So yeah, I can see after we spoke about it, it became clearer a little later, but um, it's one thing to say a capacity a general capacity doesn't infer the use of that capacity in a specific instant versus a general capacity doesn't infer a capacity in a specific instance like you know general capacity to have reason doesn't infer that a given individual has reason the capacity uh, like they're two different things so that and the use of that capacity and then on top of that um what I was doing, which you pointed out was, I think there is, there must be two meanings of the capacity. Cause if you say like the species has the capacity to give birth, that's different from the species has the capacity of reason. Cause in, in birth, like you pointed out with penguins, like some of the species has it. It's like the, the word is being used differently. There's some kind of context that's implied. And so it's, it's a different meaning. Um, and you can get, I got confused between them anyway, but that, that's how I'm seeing it now. It makes sense. Yeah, I would say it is one of those words that almost always needs further explanation. Like, you can't just say capacity because capacity of what? Like, going more detail helps, which is what we did. Like, you're just relating it to the general, the species in general, the class in general, versus individuals within the class. Yeah. Yeah, all of that was from this, like all these questions get rooted in the same mistake anyway, so I can just move on. Yeah. Okay. That was pretty cool though. How do you um, determine the point where it becomes probable? This is I, that. Yeah, the, the, the style of the question reduces to the same, or the, the I don't know how to say it, but the, the question itself, this kind of, it's a certain kind of question that I'm asking a lot of and it reduces to some kind of epistemological issue. Because do you remember I asked you, at what point is something evil? At what point do you say yeah. this is bad? Which is the same, it's the same kind of question, essentially. It does seem it to be one of epistemology. Right. I, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's on a continuum. And a continuum, you really don't generally have exact points. I can't give general principles. and when it becomes probable just to say that when you have more evidence is more likely it doesn't really matter i think exactly where yeah that point is the point is just that the more evidence you have indicates something even better or something more clear once something's just probable just means you have more evidence he's just indicating that point on the continuum yeah that's what he's saying continuum rather than an exact point yeah. Like you might want certain senses of probable versus possible in court or whatnot. But as far as the general principles here, we don't need to get more specific. Got it. But I guess maybe in that case, each context will, will on its own determine what's appropriate, what's an appropriate category. That will decide right. if that means 40% or 50% or not even in percentages, but some body of evidence they'll, they'll yes. decide what's possible and probable. So, yeah. Yes. Okay. That sounds right. Okay. Complex. It is a sum complex. I am this is not a constraint. Um, mm, the phrasing here is difficult for sure, like Peacock's own phrasing. It's right. Uh, let's see. The conclusion is certain when it has been logically validated. Once you've validated, it's beyond just, and it's, and it's not any longer on the evidential continuum. It's just a matter of it's been 
therefore it is certain. Saying items of knowledge, I think he's indicated something about the relationship among knowledge among it. I think that's what he's saying. Like your knowledge it could be complex in a sense. It's connected to a lot and coming to understand that doesn't rely on just one piece of evidence be a lot going in there. That's how I interpret right. it. Right. Um, and okay. So and it's a state of knowledge also. Mm, okay, so the previous thing you said is basically each item of knowledge you're looking at is in relation to the standard of proof and that and, and the, uh, the the specific knowledge can be there can be a lot of it so that's why it's complex right and it's in real it's being looked at in relation to the proof i that's how i understand to be because yeah. it's a complex sentence here like it's hard to understand exactly what it means but taking into account the rest of the paragraph as like um clarification like he's saying um it's in contrast there's an evidential state it's like it possible or there's evidence that which is distinguished from it's certain that like there are different states of knowledge like one is like you're measure, weighing it against like it's possible chance to being true versus once you've gone beyond that state once you've validated it it's then certain which is a different state of knowledge they're different kinds of knowledge. Uh, or, I okay, mean, I see. They're not on the same continuum anymore. I get it. Yeah, I, I got. I actually thought that certainty was on the same continuum, but I see that's not possible because it's a different state. Like you're pointing out, it's a different quality over like a continuum which is for evidence, which is again some kind of conclusion. Um, considered in contrast to that. Yeah, okay, because it's a different state. Okay, so I, I think I'm clearer on that. It's not, when you're certain, when you have contextual certainty, you're no longer on the evidential continuum. You've, you've got, but it does, um, you're, not, you're not on the, well, it doesn't make sense to say you're not on the evidential continuum, but we'll go with certainty is not on the evidential continuum, but it does imply uh, a certain relationship to items on the ev certain uh, knowledge on the evidential continuum. Does that make any sense? I think it does in the sense that you can get more knowledge or get something else, some other fact of reality, which would then influence those states of certainty. And maybe you'll go back to an evidential continuum. Like once you use a particular fact, it, it's no longer validated. And you could say it went back onto the continuum. What, what do you mean by that? Can you? Well, just like, like I was mentioning about like seeing the sunset every day, except the time you went to Alaska, then it didn't set one day. And that's like a new fact. And then like that previous state of knowledge, like a certainty that the sun sets every day. Well, there's some bit of context added to that. So that I mean it became like you had to revalidate what you knew, like, or re-understand, like, reconceptualize and then it became certain again right so oh actually that's an interesting example because of we spoke about that i think last time but specifically uh in relation to that example with the blood types of like yeah. do you then say if you if you move to like some scandinavian country or something and the blood uh the not the blood isn't setting <laughs> it's 7 a.m yeah the sun doesn't set do you then conclude oh all my knowledge was a failure the sun it's not true that the sun doesn't set is that what david hume actually got into i don't know yeah. i haven't researched the response but i know we did uh, the sun setting is okay. like a, a thing we say we're certain about but how could you really be sure so in that case uh, I sort of get why someone would say, well, how can you be certain of anything? Because, you know, you see the sunset every day and then you go to um, Greenland or something and it doesn't set. And then, so that means you're wrong. It doesn't set every day, but how would you, because when I, when I think of that, I go, okay, well, it does seem like an exception. I can't uh, 
arrange it in my mind so it's not like there's some factor at play if you're just let, let's let's get rid of like oh okay we understand we're on planets and all that but you just you're just an observer and it's like pre um renaissance science and all of that and you just go to some country in the north and you're like oh the sun doesn't set every day how you how do you manage that what well, how do you think about that where it still fits in using philosophy that it's not an exception it's not like wow so you don't know sometimes in some places it might not set yeah you would have to under that you might not necessarily say oh it doesn't set every day you might want to modify the proposition sure and you could say the proposition wasn't quite right but your state of knowledge i don't like the evidence you had the validation you had that doesn't go away that whole process i mean I, a lot of it's still there you just have to recognize that yeah if you're being rational about it you have to come to some method of reasoning or by using your reasoning you would say there's got to be some other contextual factor going on right and there has to be like you can't just say oh it's magic or something like if you're being rational about it yeah you would have some principles of investigation some manner of going about doing it which yeah which would be like using your senses validation and all that i mean that would just call into the other the other things we need to do when we have uncertainty all these principles of reasoning of context all that now that i think about it i guess it's the same as the boiling water because you conclude the same thing right if you're like in the mountains and you boil water and it takes much more to boil water you go oh well you don't know what what temperature water is going to boil at it's just a bit more complicated with the sun because if you don't know how planets if you don't know anything about the planets then yeah and you know you can still boil the water at high out you can still boil water at high altitude it's just that the sun not setting is different but it's still sort of similar i i can see um, yeah in a way you can that question you just asked could be like that's why um bacon or what's his first name thomas francis bacon? bacon francis bacon yeah yeah he's the one who came up with these principles of scientific reasoning that might have a lot to do with this but like when he said the renaissance what if you don't know well that's why somebody came up with these principles in fact figure it out i just thought that was worth right. thinking and, and to figure out what like are you, are you speaking about when when there's like something that you believe something is true and then you you go you, you're in some other you see something that counters that is that what you mean well i mean scientific reasoning and induction Francis Bacon came up with a lot of principles for that. Okay. The kind of think of like comparing things and other scientific reasoning stuff that we maybe take for granted now, but that he kind of wrote it down and right. contextualized and took those ideas like, well, how could you really know? It's like, well, if you're this Renaissance person that doesn't know much, then, well, here's a time when, yeah, that's exactly the state of things. And even still, people came up with different scientific principles to get where we are now. And Mill, Mill as well, Mill's methods. Yeah, him too. Is that related? I think so, but that's the mid 1800s, so oh, okay. I don't much know. later. All right. Um, let's see what I'm on about here. Okay, hey, this is back to the arbitrary. And then yeah. uh, we sort of discussed this last time. The question yes. was, you know, like, yeah, we can. Uh, like even like when I mentioned Tibet, like you, you mentioned another country and I forget what example you gave actually. It looks quite similar to the one you came up with. Mm. I don't know. I can't remember. Yeah, but it was maybe I came up with questions of different countries for a different thing. This is about, yeah. 
I, I not, not understanding like, but yeah, we can, that, that'll come up in another, um, as in when I, when I write about that in the previous, about the previous question, yeah. it'll sort of come up because it's the, the same issue. Okay. Let's yes. go to the next. Uh, this is going to be similar, actually. This is a conversation between a skeptic and his opponent. And it's, it's going to be that I can tell already, it's going to be the same issue of like, well, there are many cases where you would have said something is arbitrary, but then it did turn out there's some factor that's, and so I still can't get my head around that. Um, let's see though. All right, so man is fallible. And then basically the guy's going, well, show me evidence that I, that a general capacity to err doesn't, Man's general capacity is, is not warrant a hypothesis of error in a particular case. And I validated my conclusion. I've demonstrated that this case is right. By the way, if I can change, like I reckon because I, because I'm having so much trouble with this, I think that if I can understand it and change it, it's going to change my thinking because I probably do yes. this uh, a lot, mm -hmm. like specifically with the arbitrary and the, the skeptics approach of like capacity inferring a specific instance of something happening in, Okay. Yeah, I, I can relate to that because I tend to be on the skeptical side too about asking questions like, well, how do you know? I mean, I tend to do that too. So I relate to that way of thinking. Yeah. Uh, although in my case, it's probably significantly more jarring than yours in that I could start with something arbitrary. But anyway, yeah. um, prove that this non detectable error does not exist. All right, so let's see what I what silly thing I can't. <laughs> let's say it's three nine oh five BC, or some and someone is saying the Earth is flat because we have walked around a large amount of it and can see it with our eyes. Therefore, any other claim is arbitrary. The Earth is flat, and this is contextual certainty. But the Earth isn't flat; it's round. Well, yeah, like I'm just imagining someone walking around saying, mm, "Maybe it's not flat," and then that you're going, "Nope, it cuts not. Nope, it's arbitrary." <laughs> So what? Well, I would. I wouldn't just be saying, "Oh, it's not flat." I would just say, "I'd have to offer some alternative." Is how I'm thinking that. Like, I'm saying it's not flat; it's round. I have evidence that it's round. Here right. it is. Or I could point to say that they were wrong about Earth being flat, based on specific bits of reasoning. And I probably would if I can say that you're wrong about it, then I could, I think necessarily you'll, it'll point to something else being possible or at least a set of possibilities. Like if it's not flat, then, well, then what is it? Is it round? Is it, is it um, a torus? Is it a, is it a cube or whatever it might be? Like if you're gonna try to prove him wrong, you have to have evidence to something Right. Like either evidence of like find the logical flaw in his reasoning or you provide counter evidence or you provide evidence of another claim that would go against his thinking of it in the positive sense, not just not merely disproving him. I mean that could be part of it, like if there's a flaw in his argument. But if his argument is fine, then you would just have to point to actual evidence in the world like of some other proposition or some other claim. Suppose the complexity is, and this probably applies to everything. I see what you're saying. Uh, I guess that's where I was going wrong. But part of it I can see now is epistemology, meaning when I say the earth is flat, in some sense it is. Like where I'm walking at least appears flat, right? Yeah. yeah. And you can't deny that. That's That's true. But then in another sense, it's not flat. And so I don't know how to explain this, but there's like, there's some whole complexity to it that would make it extremely difficult to just infer if you're walking around, like you wouldn't, even with the sun, right? Like, okay, sun sets every day and you're just a, a man living on earth without much advanced scientific knowledge. There are so many factors involved for you to understand, okay, there's a rotation of the planets. Uh, we rotate around the sun or whatever. And like, there, there's so many things involved that it, it, it seems you can run into something that seems completely puzzling. Um, and then at the same time, like the sun is setting every day in some places and the earth is flat, but then 
I, I don't know if that, if I'm going to keep going, if it will make any sense of what I'm trying to capture. I'm just saying that there's so many factors involved in some of these things that I can't see how you jump to, you know, just living on earth, you jump to say the earth is round. Like it's uh, quite a big leap in thoughts. Yes, of course. It does take a lot of actually mathematical reasoning to come to the conclusion that the earth is round without looking from the outside. Right. Like it was validated like in like 1000 BC, like people oh, wow. knew. But like yeah. in, in 3905 BC, yeah, nobody, probably nobody really knew. Yeah. But it's crazy. But, it's still even then crazy to think that they would go like, I bet you people still didn't believe it because it was like, it just kind of contradicts your senses, at least where you're at, you know, you're just like, well, I don't know why uh, the ship curves over the horizon, but I can see where I'm walking. It's flat. Like, how can you say the earth is round? Like, that's complex. It's really hard to uh, now, obviously, everyone's like, oh, of course, the earth is round. But like, to me, I can see how that would be a huge leap. Yeah, I could see that. I mean, they're, um, what was I going to say? You've got um, yeah, you could just see that evidence, but if you're gonna dispute it, you've got to have some positive evidence. You shouldn't just say, "Well, that's wrong." I mean, if it's wrong, you had to have offer some evidence. Yes. If you're just saying it's wrong just because, then that'd be arbitrary. You're right. Yeah, I get, I get that part now. Yeah. So there's got to be. It's not. It, there's a couple of things. So when someone says the earth is flat, uh, there's the earth is flat and where they're at. And then there's a whole assumption about the earth itself and they're different things. So you, I think there uh, you can say the earth is flat and it's not a problem to say, like, as soon as you see evidence of something strange, then you start reconsidering. But if you don't see any evidence, it's not even that you're saying it's wrong. You just, you, you can't think about it because like anything, you, you can't start a thought from, just some random non-existent thing because then you get coordinate loop like i used to do a lot of you know so i now i get that i get i get why it's there um yeah and what you're saying about someone needs to show evidence that it's not flat um i guess what i was trying to get at before though was uh, i'll see if i can word it better now is that when you see some strange behavior whether it's planets or something on earth uh and you can't make sense of it or even let's say behavior in people or something else it's possible that this there's a uh there's something that will there, there's some knowledge that will completely upend i don't know if upend is the right word but will completely shift your worldview in some way because like think about when everyone's walking around and they just think that we're like a flat piece of earth and there's this sun that's in front and sets and goes up and down and that's that's their model of the whole universe and then suddenly they're told, oh, well, actually, we're this ball floating around the sun and there's all these other planets. Like, that's a complete shift in worldview. Yeah, it is. I mean, that's... Some philosophers of science call that a, a paradigm shift where the, there's, like, a fundamental shift in the way science is done uh, in a particular field. Yeah. There's different theories about it, so there's no point getting into really detail about it because... yeah. But the idea just being that there's fundamental shifts in the conceptual space that they use, like with Galileo and, well, Newton in particular would shift a lot of things, or Copernicus. I guess you could apply that thinking, though, to any observation you make where you see something that contradicts what you thought was true and is a bit puzzling. It might imply that there's a huge context of knowledge which you're missing. That's what I was getting at. Yeah. Just like if you read a philosopher and he's saying something that's absolutely absurd, you're like, oh, there's, there might be a huge body of knowledge here that's supporting this claim. Okay. Let me scroll, scroll down a bit. Oh, let me maximize. Just like the green skin What is a, yeah, I think, first of all, what's a higher level question? Like, what does it mean it's applicable to some higher level questions? I think higher level just being more abstract. Oh, okay. Let's see, 
second. Hmm, I'm a bit confused, I think. Um, uh, like, <laughs> this whole thing of what's required to reach proof in many different examples. Um, I don't know if the question makes sense. What is meant by epigonalist? Um, uh, I mean, this, I... bit, this bit we answered. Uh, okay. We, 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 we answered this, right? You said abstract, abstractions. Yeah. Or even like more complex science, like you're asking about like the like how the sun sets would be like tilted to the earth, but then you get something as wildly complex as quantum physics, which is just pales in comparison. Right. Well, yeah, I mean, that's kind of, that would be a higher level question. Right. In which case doubt might be more applicable there because there is so much facts to keep into account that it would be reasonable sometimes to have this, this state where you really don't know despite everything you have. Mm. But he's yeah, saying that the doubter, if you're like in a rational sense, he he knows what would make the doubt go away. Like what state of knowledge would, like what facts would need to be known? What would need to be known to eliminate that, this doubt? Or that there's some principle that he knows or some fact that would fix everything and reveal the answer. Like he knows there's an answer, just doesn't know what. But then he knows there's an answer, but um, yeah, that's, see, that's what I got confused about. Cause I thought what else is, he must know what's required to reach full proof, but that's to me is an answer, at least uh, if, as far as I'm understanding this so far. And that's why I'm, con I, that's why I now remember why I was confused. Cause I was like, well, like if you're, you know, talking about like, we're talking about the sun and you don't know why it doesn't set in some other country, you're like, how can you know what's required to like, what are you even trying to prove? I, I don't know. I'm, I'm just confused with the whole, like you must know what's required to reach full proof to. Um, I mean, I would think of it like, well, if you need to prove a murder, like, you know, like if I need to prove that Johnson killed his wife, like, like if I could doubt it, but I, I guess I doubt that he did it, but you would know what would end that doubt. Like either that, his fingerprints on her dead body that was like oh i know for sure in that case if i found that out then it would remove the doubt well do you for sure though because you might not like i could imagine someone saying in that situation like oh, i doubt he killed her because um you know he's a friendly guy blah 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 and like you ask him well what would be required for evidence it's like would fit would only fingerprints be enough like you might not know you might still be like well maybe a video of her killing her i don't, yeah, I don't I mean I, I don't know i think that'd be a fine way of thinking of doubt like i mean you're still saying that there is some way to get to the answer like this is the answer and you can get it oh, like, okay. it might be hard but right but you know there's you can list out the ways you'll know it's something else to be true or know this fact to be true or not Maybe I'm getting bet confused between understanding something like some phenomenon and proving something. I think I'm getting, I'm confusing the two because if you understand something, there's no fine. Like if you're trying to understand why the sun doesn't set, for example, what are you trying to prove exactly? I think I got confused there. Cause like in that case, I'm like, you, you experience doubt about your understanding of like why the sun sets in some places, but not in others. But uh, maybe I'm equivocating again, but yeah, that that's probably where I was confused too. So there's understanding things where you can experience doubt because now your understanding is like not clear, you know, like, well, does the sunset versus prove a murder, for example, or disprove where you might have some better idea of like what, what's required to reach full proof. Do, do you think that's, um, that, that's I think it's closer. I'm thinking more like say, If you know the, you could think of that if you, 
observe some other fact that would confirm it. Mm. Trying to think of a good example. I mean, you could just look at other, if something else is true, then this would also have to be true. Like if say something about solar eclipses, like Einstein did something like this where he had a theory. What I don't think it was relativity exactly, but he had a theory that like it was probably true, but there's reason to doubt it. And the way, one way to confirm it would be observing a solar eclipse and something about the solar eclipse you would have to see and that would validate his theory. Yeah. So he wasn't able to really validate it until then. He had reason to doubt, but he knows what would be sufficient to prove it, okay. but he can have doubt for now. And then later on, that eclipse did happen. They made the observations and it was validated. And you could say it was in fact true. But at that point before then, like it was reasonable to doubt it because there was some piece of evidence you still needed. He didn't have it yet, but he knew it would be enough to either prove or disprove his theory. Yeah. Okay. Um, and there's no, it's not possible for someone to have a theory and then not know uh, what's required to prove it. Is that, does that make sense? Is it yeah. not possible? Yeah, I don't think that would be possible or it would be a bad theory if you, I mean, that's like saying it's true, but I can never prove it. It's true, but there's no evidence that can never be found. That'd be kind of arbitrary. Like you're saying there's no evidence, then what are you even doing saying that? Maybe that's the fault. That's also back touching on that falsifiability principle. Yes, it is. Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, I need to think about this more because it's, uh, I can, I'm kind of stuck. Uh, so I'll come back, I'll write about it and then come back to it later. Yeah. What yeah, you're saying keep, makes sense. I yeah. bring up science examples here because like those are usually the most common ways to discuss about like doubt, but I'm sure you can come up with, I think the challenge would be coming up with say, um, well, when he said higher level questions, it, it really does mostly come into these more really complex dynamic questions. You're not really gonna find everyday examples of that. Maybe like court case, complex court cases, scientific theories or something like that. Yeah. You might, it might not really come into play for like, like a balls roll or something or, or ovens are hot. Like you okay. might doubt might not really, like those might not be good examples, but the challenge would be thinking of other examples outside yeah. of science. I can find some, I think. I, I wrote, I was reading books and I was just noting points where a character might make an inference of some kind. Mm -hmm. You could probably, uh, like they're more, they're much easier examples and that they're worth for me deconstructing and trying to put it in terms of this because then it you know, makes it more real. Um, mm -hmm. So even from like just fiction that I'm reading, like an example of, some someone is chased and then some some other people come and arrive to speak with him and he's like makes a connection between that and something else and um yeah and but he's still experiencing doubt i will get into that later i'll i'll, I'll uh, aggregate all those examples because they're like way easier than science which i don't know much about so yeah. all right so this is just a section which we can do it quickly because if there's something that's like too hard i'm probably going to have to write about okay. it um, but it's just a whole bunch. I've got even more questions than this that aren't in this document, but they relate to this section, which I mean, to me is good, right? Because there's obviously a lot that I that's, yeah. I don't get. Um, yeah, this is a question I had as well. Like, how do you even determine what constitutes proof? And then is proof proven? Is like what constitutes proof proven or is that validated? <laughs> that... that I don't know. I would say validated, but that really just gets into perception. 
because I mean, what constitutes proof? Like, well, that could be proven, I think, wouldn't it? We need, I know we need reference to examples, which sorry, I didn't have, I was racking my brain trying to, this is still too abstract for me. Yeah, I mean, just think back to like identity I and mean, it's just, you don't prove identity, you just validate it. You can't prove that it's true because everything rests on that premise that everything has an identity. Like you can't prove something by using the concept proof. Like you can't use it itself. Like you can't prove proof, I think. I mean, that's like having proof. The concept proof depends on these um, these claims that can't be wrong. Like it can't be wrong that your like existence exists would be I mean, that's like the basis of proof or I mean that it's there. That I mean you reduce it to the perceptual level. Because that can't be wrong. It is what it is. I would say though that that's different, uh, and you tell me if I'm if I'm wrong, because um, I'm trying to use words here so to make sure I understand it. So the axiom are non-contextual because they're not. Um, it, it's not a contextual thing. It's just I think an absolute is the word was that was used. Whereas proof, like if you're looking at a situation, I'm trying to think of an example. Um, Prove that, um, prove, what's a, an example? Uh, prove that my tea is hot. Uh, okay, so what's what constitutes proof for that is I'd need to touch it and actually, or I could do other things, like I could see if there's steam coming out of it or whatever. Uh, I could say that that constitutes proof. I could say using my hand to touch it would constitute proof. Using a thermometer would constitute proof. Um, sorry for the dumb example. I can't think of another one. And then, so I say that I claim that constitutes proof. And then I still think I can prove that that's what constitutes proof. Like you can then go in, cause it's contextual information. Like, um, you know what I'm saying? Cause then I'm like, well, thermometers measure temperature and the temperature, and then you can prove that a thermometer measures temperature and then steam uh, comes out of hot things. So you could prove steam comes out of hot things. So like you can prove Oh yeah, actually, maybe you can prove what constitutes proof. Do you, how, yeah, what do you I think mean, of that? It can be broken down for like the proof of the proof. I mean, yeah, I mean that it'll bottom out at some point, but I think that'd be fair to do. Like you're building on prior proofs. Okay. Like you've already proven that hot, hot water steams. And that could be used to as further evidence. I mean, proof for the proof is just evidence. I would usually say, like, I could say something is evidence, like, like there's steam, but I would have to already have known that steam comes from hot things. Otherwise, it's not really evidence of anything. It's just doesn't mean anything to me. Right. I, okay. I think on some level, like, I thought you were asking a more abstract question, like, like. <laughs> Are these principles of proof? Are they proven or validated? Which I don't uh, know. What I know what you mean. Yeah. Well, let me I put that down as a question. What was that question? Are the principles? Are the principles of proof proven or validated? Proven or valid? I don't even know what that is, but I'm gonna ask that question somewhere. So. <laughs> yeah, like uh, of all these things, oh, proof is evident. Proof is constitutes is constituted by evidence, or you need evidence. Well. How do you know you need evidence? Which, I mean, it's a whole huge question, which you have to integrate everything else probably that that's good. you've learned about reason and all that. But if it's you, a very complicated question. Well, I mean, that's to me is it's, um, if I'm able to navigate my way around those questions and think about them, that means I really understand these concepts. Whereas if I, if I don't, then I know I, I'm, if I get confused, because every, if everything is tight, if what is being said here is true, if everything is tightly integrated and all my concepts are clearly connected in some way, yeah. I have a really good sense of what depends on what, how everything relates to everything else. And it, it wouldn't be too hard to do. So the more of these questions I ask from my perspective, the better. 
And the more things I'm confused about when I ask, like if I'm confused, it means I don't understand. So I've got to ask one of those questions. So that's good. I'll definitely get more into that. Um, but we can, maybe that's better for a written, a written thing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, I don't even know how, like that would take me a while to answer. Like I yeah. need to think of that one. Yeah. Okay. But right. as far as what you were saying, like, like proof of proof and yeah, I mean, you could have proof of other things and it's built on prior proof. Like all your knowledge is built up from something. So it would make sense. So it, I, I think it also comes down to um, one, one thing I've noticed that comes up or has come up a few times now is uh, so the words have the, the words refer to different concepts uh, in different contexts. So like when I, when I used the, remember when I, I gave the, I was confused about capacity and I, I had all these questions about it, but I was equivocating. So I think that's one thing that might be coming up here too, because you interpret it as like way more abstract than I was actually interpreting it and so on. So there's definitely like, that's another thing to be careful of when we're uh, looking at this stuff. It, just to clarify something, I, I wouldn't say those two senses of, um, capacity are different concepts i would say they're just referring to different aspects of the like they're just applied to different contexts that's so the same concept applied to different areas what do you mean like here's how i understood it and then tell me what so i understood it as there's a kind of capacity that's for every single unit of that species and then there's a kind that you just say like you just when you when you say oh well may, okay maybe this maybe it's it's the same thing but in one instant you're saying you the implied context is everyone in the species has that like the language isn't that precise is basically what i'm saying like you can imply that every unit in the species has it with like some right. capacities and you can imply that some part of this some big part proportion of the species has it and so you say the species has it but you don't mean that uh, I don't know if that, does that make sense? So you're like, just, it's just yeah. not precise language usage, which is fine, but that's how, that's yeah. how you communicate, right? Yeah, that happens sometimes. I mean, are you referring to the same concept? Because as you said, there are kinds of capacity. Right. You still know what it refers to, but exactly in what way, like in what way is capacity differing? Equivocating would say, well, they don't differ. They mean the same thing in the same way, but like, but you're, what I'm trying to say is that makes equivocation is that, well, there's actually two different ways you're using it, but you're treating them as the same and you can't do that. You got it. Right. It's like dropping context in a way. Oh, okay. Okay. So it's, yeah, I get it now. So it's not even about whether you're using a different concept. It's about if you use it, you could be using the same concept in a different way, like capacity in the sense that every unit has it and capacity in the sense that many units have it. Is that, is yeah. that accurate? Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, there's a lot of that too. Um, and I think okay. that gets clear, like when you learn other languages, that seems to come up a lot. Like you realize that you what you think we're like, oh, that's a very weird usage, but then if you think about it, they're referring to the same thing in just different ways. Um, like yesterday, I was reading a word. Well, the word mechanism in Spanish, it it's kind of like in English, but it could also refer to like a situation, not just actions. So it might seem like, oh, they're different concepts, but it's actually, it's not like two uses of the word mechanism, rather. They're just the same concept, different context. I don't know if uh, that example helped, but. No, but it's interesting. How does, do you want to go into that? How does that work? Like mechanism isn't the same concept, is it? Well, in English, it's just usually just for specific actions but in spanish it just seems to be used for actions and situations uh, let me try to think of a better example that's not a good example i think in might be a word in japanese if i think of something i'll let you know yeah okay maybe i'll write it down we can what so what uh language use uh, actually i'm going to put it in a notepad and then next next tutorial or whatever I can ask, or I can just uh, write about it. Uh, what was it we said language use? What's the example that 
mechanism, Spanish, and um, we're saying that the same concept is being used in a different way. Is that what we're saying? In different contexts? Um, in other languages, um, it's easier to see examples of things that might seem like two separate concepts or actually one. So I don't like that mechanism example, but I can't think of another word. Okay. Got it. All right. Um, this is a, a question of application. I was, I was trying to apply this to, there's way more of these, but we're not in this document. This, uh, this has some questions, but okay. I had a conversation with my cousin and he said to me, um, my parents live overseas. I was raised here. They live, they live overseas. My family's scattered. My, my cousins in Germany, this kind of thing that we're all over. And, um, I, I visited Poland cause I have a Polish, like my grandparents are Polish. And, um, and I said, yeah, I really enjoyed it there. Like, I don't know. I felt kind of at home. I've never been there before. I don't really, I was raised Australian. I, I was, I read Ayn Rand books. I don't really think of myself as Polish or anything else. Um, or even a, I, I'm, a, I'm Australian, but I don't think I feel, I don't feel like culturally I'm any specific thing. And he said, oh, maybe you enjoyed it there because there's something in the culture, you know, because your parents have a Polish background, there's something in the culture that was transferred from the grandparents to your parents. And then you resonated with it. And I was like, how do I like, where does that, like, where, what is the basis for saying something like that even? Um, and just thinking about that in terms of everything I've learned, like, is that, a, is it applicable to say it's arbitrary? Cause in a sense, it's not like you could point out and say, you know, your grandpa's are Polish, but then I don't even see my, like I was raised here completely disconnected from any of them. So I, I don't, how, do you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm asking about something that is, this is more day to day and it's messier. Like how, to me, it's, it's arbitrary, but not completely arbitrary. Like, um, how would you think of this in, in terms of the arbitrary? Well, what was the arbitrary part again? I, I, I think I missed when you said that somehow. Yeah. So, okay. To me, what seems arbitrary about this is that I just, oh, uh, okay. Actually, maybe I can see why there's, maybe I would need to ask him, um, I mean, I, I guess the question is more about the kind of claims people make. Like, so he was saying that I enjoyed Poland because uh, my grandparents, my, my grandparents aren't there. Okay. Yeah. There. But he's saying I enjoyed it because they used to be from there. But to me, that seems yes. like a, how do you even, I, I just don't get the whole process of going from uh, some, there's some unknown thing that you're not aware of that was transferred from your grandparents to your parents, to you. And oh, of course, of course, you don't yeah. know, like you can't see it because you're not aware of it. It's like, I don't know how to, like, that is in a sense the arbitrary, right? Like it's this thing in the background, which you're not aware of, but somehow someone knows that if that's possible, that it, it was transferred to you. Like, isn't that, would you say that's arbitrary? Because I don't know if it's completely arbitrary. Yeah, I mean, I don't think so. Either. easily disproven. And you could say, well, we know that enjoying a place that you've never been to, like there's no reason to even say that your grandparents living there had anything to do with what you feel now. And there's no way to say that their memories like transferred into you. <laughs> like there's no real mechanism that could even happen. So, I mean, it could be not arbitrary in the sense that he's offering some evidence like oh your grandparents are from there like at least it's something but you can easily disprove it well i don't even know about i actually don't think it's that disprovable because that's why i was like i wonder if it relates to the arbitrary because it's like i just didn't see the logic at all and like i don't think it's easily disprovable because if you claim you could then claim well you know, there's subconscious transfers of information. And yes, then that's like... when it gets kind of <laughs> arbitrary because there is no evidence of it. Even if you ask, it's like, well, I don't have any. And how could there be? Like, and that would be kind of like 
what the arbitrary is like. Like, it doesn't yeah. matter what you offer. There's still this unverifiable thing out there that you can't even refer to that's making it happen. It's like literal magic. Like, not even like, oh, we don't know yet, but saying there is no way to, in principle, to figure it out or to prove it. Yeah, I suppose um, in that case, it's best to try and like, this goes back to when we were saying when someone says something can be arbitrary from your perspective, but see why they think that. Like if you can, if you want to get into that conversation, go into detail and like what what leads you to believe, you know, that's true. Um, that might be, yeah. but yeah. Um, yeah, like if he's your cousin, you, you like him a lot otherwise, because there's one weird thing you might, like I'd be curious too if I was like close to him, but. I didn't talk to him about like science or whatever. I was like, well, why do you think that? I mean, I would genuinely be curious. Yeah, I don't, I don't, um, I, I like him. It's more just, I was trying to apply what I'm learning to, to, you know what I'm saying? I was trying to apply the specific things that I'm learning to everything yeah. in my life. And it's actually yeah, pretty hard, right? Reason. It's pretty well, hard to do. I think that's do. a good example though. A good way to think of it. I'll ask him next time I speak to him if he wants to like, Oh, you'll probably come up with some other claim, but <laughs> about something yeah. else, but then it's good to, I'll try and uh, see if I can get his reasoning. And the other thing that confused me about it, I think, which we touched on and I'll get into again later is that whole thing of like, um, you know, if it is true, you can always say like with this, um, you know, with the earth is flat, like maybe it's not f just getting confused around like, if I, I say it's arbitrary, meaning I shouldn't think about it, but then what if it is true? I keep thinking about, I get stuck in that. So I need to think about that more as well. This whole section is pretty, is pretty big for me actually. So. Yeah. I mean, I would always just come back to, do you have evidence for it? That's really what it always comes down to. Do you have some way to prove this claim? Is there some way even in principle? Is there some kind of evidence that would be out there? Yeah. And um, yeah, I still need to think about it more though. Okay. Let me stop this.